Okay. Iron Buddy to go, sir. Okay. Sugar pie, honey bun. You it's the I food scientist. We do love you. <laughs> we We're going to do a podcast. We have Valentine's we are. food. We are the food scientists getting ready to record episode 152 featuring the new gluten free Oreos. Oh, I think that's yeah. me, guys. Why did you make a face? <laughs> are you scared oh, of gluten free? I kind of. A little bit. I don't know. Fred, it's an Oreo. Do. Don't you love. I mean, you, okay. You... I, I love Reese's. They're gluten free. Yeah. And good morning to both Heathers. Happy yeah, birthday. hi. Uh, yeah, no, like I've actually heard really good reviews of these so far from people. Right, but they're from people that haven't had the sweet, sweet taste of Oreos in a very long time. So it's... You know, I... they're, they're people that need to be gluten-free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. We will find out. I know we will do the made... actual comparison. Yeah. I have my theory on it. Uh, um... <laughs> Hey, Pops. Hey, Silly Sally. Um, I made a TikTok video just, you know, about the things that we're doing this week. And uh, one of them showed both Oreos and someone commented, seeing those together makes me so nervous. And I said, oh, you don't want to do like a little cookie roulette where you uh, take one regular and five gluten free and like spin them around. And that seems like a scam. <laughs> Whenever I hear anyone playing roulette, I think it's a scam. <laughs> roulette is a huge scam. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. We're going to compare regular Oreos to gluten free and see how similar they Who's are. Who's the evil twin? Yeah, but you're going to have to wait for that one because we're doing that last today. Should we do a podcast? Let's do a podcast because this is this is a good show. Hey, Corey. It is. If, if we actually do it, if we pause. Oh, yeah. I can pause. Yeah, I'm we can. Uh... Pausing. This is the Food Scientist Podcast. I am your host, Amy Zajac. I am here with Danny Sassman. Hey, Amy Zajac. And Brian Pierce. Hello, Amy Zajac and everyone. Yes. But am um, I included in everyone? I, I, I believe so. I, I don't okay. think that the dictionary made that omission, you know, to exclude you. Well, that was thoughtful. It was. It really oh, was. Shout out to Miriam Webster. She and I had a thing very briefly. We will have uh, news and experiences and shocking twists to host Amy. Actually, has a couple of each. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're hitting the <laughs> town, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> then we will segue into some Valentine's candies, uh, Reese's Kit Kats. We have a variety of honey buns. Tasty cake honey buns. Yay! It's like and going that, back to your roots, sort of. Yeah. It's like a brief time of your life. Yeah. Yep. And yes, gluten-free Oreos, and we're going to compare them to the regular Oreos, so you know. And regular and double stuff as well. They they are making gluten-free in both of those versions. Oh, yeah. Now, now, was there ever gluten in the cream? That's a great question. I don't believe so. I, I don't. I don't know either. Well, we'll find out what exactly what the difference is. I'm very excited about Boston cream honey buns, which makes no sense, but seems I'm excited about potentially all of them. good. So shall we move on? We got news? We should. Do well, we I have can go news? first because a couple okay. of mine, one of my news items is, well, it's a twofer. It's it's pretty, anyway. Taco Bell. <laughs> Sticking with fast foods here. Taco Bell uh, is coming back out with their, uh, what are they calling it? They're, they're bringing back cheesy Fiesta potatoes. If you recall a while back, they took a number of fan favorites off the menu, including the pizza. The, the pizza. Oh, people were mad. Yeah. So they're bringing back their cheesy Fiesta potatoes, which I got to be honest, I don't remember at all. But then again, I generally don't eat. Fast so is that, that is that like tachos? Well, it's it's not really. Um, oh, it's a I'm bowl sorry. of potatoes with nacho cheese on it. Hmm. It sounds similar, but yeah. I suspect I suspect that what they're doing is they took all those items off. I feel like they're going to rotate them around and bring them back you know, intermittently on the menu. Go I for the McRibbics. Go yeah. for the McRib effect. People will go because it's here. But it's not so good that they would want it if it was always there. Right. Well, it's the psychology. It's limited time only. So you have to go. I feel like that's, yeah. I feel like that's In-N-Out Burger strategy. That In-N-Out Burger is eaten a little bit by people who live where there's In-N-Out Burger and people, and a lot by people who don't live by In-N-Out Burger and then are near one and have to have it. 
I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, it's a thing because Danny, you have been away for the last month. Now it's a pandemic. We're not hanging out, but I was like, oh, Danny's so far away. I, I can't see him. I wasn't going to see you anyway, but yeah, no, you <laughs> maybe want to. Right, you, right, exactly. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm back in this space. You're and no not in the respect. one. And that's why he included you in everyone. Yeah. Yes, that is yes I'm back. I'm back that among. No. I'm, I'm back the other here among. Taco Bell thing, though, the thing nobody asked for is they're coming out with seasoning. They're, coming, they're all purpose seasoning, hot and mild. Uh, I mean, they look interesting. And I'm going to admit to one thing here with Taco Bell. I love their taco sauce, their hot sauce. I've even bought it bottled from a, a grocery store. So this could be good, but eh. I, you know, I don't have a problem like you could use it on a lot of things. I do have a problem with them calling it all purpose because I can think of a lot of things it would not be good for. Like if well, I had if um, mostly salt, you know, and then right. You but like it. if this chair had a wheel that was squeaking, I don't think that that would fix it. I don't think you could use it for every purpose. I would not use it as a hemorrhoid cream. Right. No, especially yeah. not the spicy one. Your hemorrhoids? Although maybe, but it, it maybe says all purpose. I, it says all purpose. Like, all right, I've got an. I've got this just I've just got a rash. I don't think it's gonna help and I think the hot one is gonna make it worse. Do you normally season your rashes? You do you really want to know the answer to that, Amy? Do you really want to know the answer to that? Because you know he'll Well, I it. actually probably would, but our listeners maybe Exactly. Do not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I do have another item, but I don't know if you guys want to go first or should I tie yeah, it all up? Go, it, it's, it's, yeah, you know, go more. Because we've already derailed one. Let's derail two. Yes. Uh Pizza Hut. It's coming out oh. with a Detroit style pizza. And this right, speaking of hemorrhoids. Is very skeptical. Um, it's the right shape, but the picture already makes it look wrong. They don't have the toppings all the way to the edge. Um, but it's the square shaped pan pizza with cheese to the edge. That's why they're calling it Detroit I mean, style. I think. To me, I think it's actually the same pan pizza, but in a different shaped pan. Yeah, probably. They're not doing right. authentic buddy style Detroit pizza. So. When, when we heard about this, I was actually surprised. I was like, I wonder if Little Caesars has a Detroit style pizza. And it turns out one, yes, and two for like a decade. And I had no yes, idea. I'm the one that told you about it. <laughs> and it's good, actually. Like, you know, it's not great, but for Little Caesars, it's really good. Yeah. Huh. Well, hmm. so I, feel but, like I mean, I will out. try it just because, you know, it's pizza. I think when it comes out, we should evil twin that with the Little Caesars and just see. Or maybe I could have shipped in some buddies. We could get Jets and have like the Detroit pizza that like has been in Minnesota, that was in Minnesota for a decade and still seem new to Amy yeah. because they have such a low profile. They do. And, you know, Danny, you said they're in so many states. And when I looked, I was like, wow, looking at our listener base, it is. Like, it's in like eight, they're in like yeah. 18 states. <laughs> the Jets mm-hmm. Detroit style is not good Detroit style. So if you think that's Detroit style pizza, you're getting a bad uh, impression. Do you think I'm going to get a better impression from Pizza Hut or Little Caesars? <laughs> no, you'd get a better okay. impression in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, well, you'll get a lot of things when you go to Detroit, besides an impression on their pizza. Anyway, you guys have Probably not a catalytic converter. <laughs> so I, I have news here that... Um, should be more exciting than it is because Little Debbie is coming out with another new cereal. I feel like Debbie's a little bit of a Horeo right now. You know what? I think that the pandemic is getting to her a little bit. She's, uh, you know, blanching it up. She is. So, uh, yeah, the the oatmeal cream pie was the first cereal. That was fine. I I thought that was good. Now, a lot of people actually thought it, it had too much of the, like, cinnamon nutmeg flavor. I didn't find that, but you know, I thought it was okay, but not not amazing. The next one is going to be based on cosmic brownies. Uh. So it's gonna be chocolate puffs, like cocoa puffs, but it's gonna have the little, you know how the cosmic brownies have the little candy dots on top? I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never gotten past just looking at the cosmic brownie package. You've never had a cosmic brownie? No. Wow. Yeah, I, I feel like brownie. I feel like you should buy those in like Colorado or Amsterdam. I mean, I feel like if I have something called the Cosmic Brownie and it's from Little Debbie, it's going to be a letdown. It's okay. cosmic, well, not psychedelic, Danny. Danny, well, in a few months, let's go to Colorado. Let's have an LDB on me, okay? You know what? You know, you're talking about that. I, I've seen these in a lot more places now. Poor mm. little Deb. She's got the devil in her. Oh, she's had the devil in her for a long time. Yeah, and now it's out. 
Uh, but these will come up. I, I've got actual devil dogs, too, which should be the, exactly the same. But yeah, we'll which also like the Suzy Q. The devil cream, devil dog, Suzy Q, they're, oh, they're three. They're similar. So maybe we can do That's something. True. on true. Oh, and I said LDB maybe. for newer listeners, Little Debbie Buffet. You know, when you buy a whole bunch of Little Debbie products and you just eat them all. LDB. You mean when, when Brian does. I don't know anyone else that hosts a Little Debbie Buffet. Uh, I have inspired people to do that. Thank you very much. So other people have really? done that. You're I should ask for their names, but I won't. <laughs> uh, I think that they, you know what? People have even done it without giving me credit. Which well, that's, that's yeah, that's not, a surprise. not okay. But anyway, so little Debbie cereal. I'm not excited about that. I don't want little candy dot in my cereal. It's probably yeah, no. chocolate flavored puffs with coloring on them. Yeah, so that eh, we'll, we'll see on that one. The other news that some people might like this one isn't exciting to me, but McDonald's is bringing back their Shamrock Shakes and their Shamrock McFlurry. That is going to be on February 15th, so the day after Valentine's Day. So next week, as we record this, uh, Did, for you Shamrock Shake lovers, it's coming. Well, you know, Dairy Queen also is is doing that in a way. Oh, are they? They are, right? This is another, it's a, they're calling it a new menu item, right? They've had the mint shake for a little while, but they've added a mint chip shake where they're taking like what would normally be in the mint shake, right? So it's the ice cream their milk, a little bit of their uh, mint, their creme de menthe there. And then they're adding in the uh, chocolate cone dip and blending all of that together to get you chocolatey chunks in your mint shake. And then they're putting whipped cream on top. I hope the chocolatey chunks aren't too big because if you're drinking it through a straw, that's not going to be fun. Well, well, that's where Dairy Queen is. They're they're trying to take on a rival, and they're doing it by, as Dairy Queen always does. How can we add a new item to the menu without adding a new item to our inventory? Exactly. And they're doing it by adding the cone dip into shakes. So I'm fascinated to see how that comes out. I feel like now you're really like starting to see the collision between the shake and the Blizzard. They had the cake shakes, which are quietly, uh, you know, going away. Even the, the cup factions are disappearing. I love fruity cake shake. That disappeared so fast. Right. But so now the blizzard and the shake, like they kind of diverged. But now if you start blending all these things back into this, they're coming back together. I mean, you know what I just realized recently? I don't know why I was even thinking about this or why it took me so long. But the McFlurry blizzard, you know, <laughs> like they ripped off the yeah. name. But they also announced, hey flurries compared to a blizzard were not as good <laughs> right but then <laughs> every everyone has them then i think culver's has the avalanche mm -hmm. another winter disaster mcdonald's you know it's a light version because like here in minnesota ah blizzard whatever an avalanche we got you flurries it's a scam <laughs> it is scam, <laughs> scam. <laughs> dane what so, do you have for us this week I have news in food names. Uh, are you familiar with the whatchamacallit? Oh, of course I am. Yes. Right? Oh, I, yeah. I feel like um, it's the runt of the Hershey's litter. Mm -hmm. um, it always found on the bottom shelf of the vending machine. Doesn't get snack size at Halloween. Uh, but they're extending the whatchamacallit line. There's a new one coming out. Where they're taking that same rice weirdness that is in a whatchamacallit, that I like, but it's like a crunch thing. And a whatchamacallit has a layer of caramel, right? And then it's dipped in, uh, it was made news when it became, it went from chocolate coating to chocolatey coating. But what they're doing is they're taking out the caramel and they're replacing it with peanut butter. Ooh. Huh. Yes. And they had a contest for the name and um, a woman whose name appears on the package, but I forgot to write in my notes. Um, she won. And so mm -hmm. it is going to be called the Who's What's It. Huh. Okay. You know, that really surprises me because it's kind of hard to find a whatchamacallit. And it's, it shouldn't be. But it, No, it no. Well, next to the whatchamacallit will be the Who's What's It. Yeah. So I wonder if they're going to like promote it a little bit more and kind of like push it, which they should. I mean, I feel like they have, they obviously have the equipment and they're not getting rid of it. Otherwise, they mm -hmm. would have. Yeah, which great. I, I'm hopeful for that because it, it needs more cred. 
yeah, so look for that coming to stores in the next few weeks. The Hoosie What's It. Um, and our chat has given us a few more more uh, wintry names that uh, chains have used. Wendy's Frosty, uh, Heather B is saying, and Corey is saying the Sonic Blast. So they're all on that same bandwagon. <laughs> that, I Yeah. Yeah. I um I'm also looking for a listener in England to help us. There's two products. Mm-hmm. Well, really three. One, Amy told me just before we started this that there's a zebra Kit Kat coming out, which I love all the Kit Kats, so I want that. But uh, one of the foods people talk to us about a lot that we should try. I think mostly because they love watching Brian suffer is Marmite. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Oh. We hear it all the time. Well. It's going to be exclusive to just one store in England. Uh, and it's coming, and it will only be out briefly. But they are taking Marmite. They are adding chili powder to it. And you know what they're calling it? Huh. Vomit? Dynamite. No. Di- limited edition Dynamite. Marmite with chili. It's going to be just at Sainsbury starting today if you are in England and you can get us some, go to Sainsbury, get us dynamite. I will find the Marmite. If you want to send us both, we are going to have the most epic Brian face ever if you can get us Yeah, it, it should be dynamite. Called, when I have it, it should be called Vomite. <laughs> I... You know, that was, uh, if they had the uh, Who's He What's It contest, I bet that would have been an entry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So so if you're listening in, in uh, the UK, don't. And you can get to Sainsbury's. Uh, please, please. I am begging you. I am pleading with you. I don't even want Marmite. I don't want Dynamite. But I will do whatever it takes, including eating both of those, to watch Brian eat Dynamite. And I know Danny will pay for whatever shipping, whatever. Whatever it is. Like If you're like, you know what, I will do it, but it's going to come and you're going to have to send me a million pounds because that's their currency. I will write you that check. With a Q U E. No, I will yeah, with a Q U E yeah, I will write. I, if you want a giant one, I will I will manufacture a giant check. Um you maybe don't want to bring it to the bank, but I will get you a check. Danny <laughs> likes to torture Brian, so this he would Really? When it comes to that money is no object. <laughs> none. None at all. And, and dynamite? Oh oh please, England, oh. hook me up. Or us, the podcast, and yourselves, you'll get to see it. It will not be a scam. You know, we uh, we mentioned Sonic. Are we ready to move on to experiences? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's please do that. Okay. So you, you will do anything to get out of the dynamite conversation. Okay, <laughs> because maybe the UK listeners, you know, just jump forward right here and they missed that part. <laughs> it could happen. Uh, but Sonic had something last week, actually. Uh, they had a little app exclusive. And you know I love my app coupons. You do. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't go to Sonic. It, but when they have deals, like, it's cheap enough to almost be worth it. So why not? So they had uh, 50 cent corn dogs again. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to challenge myself to see how many I can eat. Because been there, done that with the chicken nuggets. And if I'm not being filmed, if I'm not getting attention, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Oh, I decided to get like more than normal though. And I stopped myself at six and I found I could eat six corn dogs with no problem. And then I realized that's but, like a package. I haven't bought corn dogs in quite a while. You, you ate six full size corn dogs? Is that a lot? No, I'm just, oh. I wanted to make sure it wasn't like miniatures. No, it was regular corn dogs. Yeah. So oh. I was like, maybe next time I'll go for eight because like six was still only $3. Well, was crazy. it dynamite? It wasn't vomite. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, it. I didn't need the uh, Frito chili cheese burrito, though. No, that, no, you that, don't. That I didn't need to do. But you know, next time I'll get two more corn dogs instead of that. So, you know, it, it does make me wonder how. Wait, many... you got the wait? You got that also? A little. A little. <laughs> A little. So wait, you had six corn dogs <laughs> and Frito chili. What? Wrap. Yeah. A wrap? What is yeah. in that? Uh, Fritos. Chili. Chili. And cheese. <laughs> was it spicy? 
No, it no. I mean, it's Sonic. Brian oh. ate it, Danny. It wasn't yeah. spicy. I mean, honestly, it was like Hormel chili, but I don't mind Hormel chili, so I, I wasn't mad. You should just get the chili and dunk the corn dog in it. Oh, that's not a bad idea. That sounds. Oh, that's, that's that is a bad idea. That's all a bad. The visual um, is a bad idea. It's making me think of things that we won't talk about on this show. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, yeah. what was that like? The, I'm not so much curious, honestly, what it was like to eat that. I'm kind of curious what it was like the next day. Everything, hey, I'm a pro. <laughs> there is nothing different <laughs> going on. Wow, good for you. I have another I'd, experience. I'd have been like, I would only do that if I also made sure that the Sunday New York Times was showing up. I will do one of my two experiences then, because Brian has another two. So we'll, we'll roll on round robin it. Speaking of fast food and going back, to <laughs> last Thursday was my birthday Happy and birthday. I was out driving around for whatever reason. And I decided I deserved a second breakfast. It was my birthday and it was still the morning. And I thought, well, you know what I love? I don't know why, but I love McDonald's breakfast burritos. I'm going to go get some. Some plural? Way to go. Well, they give you two in one uh, meal. All right. And I wanted the the fried hash brown things and, you know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so I drive up to the drive-thru and they have all lunch menu items. I look at my clock. It's 1035. Mm-hmm. They switched to, I thought they switched to lunch at 11. This tells you how. No, 1030. I go to McDonald's. But if you order it, sometimes you can get the old leftovers. Well, I asked, is there still any? And she's like, let me, you know, I asked, do you have any breakfast? She's like, do you want a muffin? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. You're like, does it? Do you remember the movie that came out a while ago, Big Daddy, with Adam Sandler? Because they talked about that in that movie, how they switched the time a long time ago. Anyway. Yeah. So it used to be I, Well, this is only half the story. So I left. I'm like, no, I'm not going to get anything. And I just drove away. And I'm, But now I want a burrito. You know, the skinny, cheap, fast food burrito. So I went to Taco Bell. And uh, they still had their breakfast menu up, though. I didn't know they, they had so many breakfast items. <laughs> So I got uh, two uh, sausage and egg breakfast burritos from them. And I'm going to say I was surprised they're pretty good. I mean, it may be fake, but it felt like a good real char on the uh, burrito there. And on the other side, the seam was sealed well and charred. And it's still cheese, eggs, and sausage. It's kind of hard to. Oh, hey, I'm telling you. So the shell actually tasted pretty fresh. Next time you're craving something like that, Arby's has surprisingly good breakfast wraps. Too. Oh, good to know. So, to know. yeah. So my experience ties right into this, Amy. Okay. As we see, I'm I'm back in the tropical land of Minnesota, yeah. where uh, this morning it was a, a balmy negative thirteen degrees, not wind chill, oh, air the temperature wind negative thirty three. Yes. yes. I, I, I feel like that's the thing that we have to clarify to the people who live everywhere else. We're like, it's minus 13. No, it didn't feel like minus. It feels like minus 30. It's actually. So when other people, like when you're in your other part of the world and they're like, the wind chill is minus 13. You're like, do people know what that actually feels like? Sort of, <laughs> because that's what it is here now. But it feels like something else because it's winter yeah. and it never feels like what it is. It's just a big right. lie. Uh, so yeah, if you will, it's a, a scam as you will. As I don't know, it's like weather roulette. So, um, on on my drive back, um, if you've noticed, I I enjoy my beverages. It's almost like a habit. Uh, I will just like sip on water, and so that means I have to make plenty of stops along the way. And I also enjoy a good truck stop. And I have industrial sized masks because with where we're going through, you should. So I'm at a Flying J truck stop in the morning. And I'm looking, and they have their uh, their display of foods, but they have to get the food out for you. And they had a breakfast pizza. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I, I'm not even that hungry, but, you know, I can always go for second breakfast. And I think we I've talked about this a lot, right? Tacos, burritos, and pizza, secretly, their breakfast form is their strongest. And so, and it was like the big old pizza, not like the little cheap, it was like a big, like New York size pizza. I could see like scrambled eggs and bacon and I'm waiting for it. I was like, and I'm like, you know, this doesn't actually look bad for truck stop pizza, but there's a couple, there's like two people in front of me. And um, while I'm standing there, 
uh, 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 one of the workers comes out with a cart and has fresh pizzas on it. Mm. And she takes like the pepperoni pizza tray, just sets it right on top of the breakfast pizza tray, puts out all of the new pizzas and then takes away the breakfast pizzas and the others to bring them to the trash because they had expired. <laughs> and did not put out a new fresh breakfast pizza because I didn't look at my watch, but I'm presuming it was 1034. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and I and like and it's crossing my mind about like how disappointed I am that I didn't intercept this pizza from the trash. Yeah, you wanted to Costanza it. No, I, I, no, I, no, I wasn't going to take it. No, no, no. Why she put the other tray okay, on top? Okay. But I was like, <laughs> like I was standing there looking at it, and I'm like. I'm going to have some breakfast pizza in my belly. I'm not even hungry, but I'm happy, right? Because I'm seeing it, right? I'm excited about it. And then I'm like, oh, it was old. But that's not even the end of my story because we're into the two-part stories today. So, I don't know, probably 400 miles down the road in Iowa, um, I, I, I roll into uh, Iowa's favorite truck stop come and go yep. that is what it is called it's a three letter three letter word but starts with a k mm -hmm. um and they out front right on their door they have a big sign that says now serving breakfast pizza all day Ooh. and i'm like redemption right and i go into come and go and I go to their thing where they have their breakfast pizza. And I'm looking at it. And it's like the oldest, driest breakfast pizza I have ever seen. It is like 300% less fresh than the stuff that hit the trash can oh, no. at Flying J. And it's like the small size too, right? Like it looks, the, the, the Flying J one looked like, you know, from a pizza place. This clearly looks like gas station pizza. Yeah. And I got it anyway. <laughs> Because I had, like, all day been thinking about how I was disappointed <laughs> by being denied my breakfast pizza. And I ate yeah. old, should have been in, like, I wanted to be, like, grab the person and be, like, you go to the Flying J and you ask them what they would do with this pizza. It would have been in a the freaking incinerator. But. So what you're saying is the emphasis was more on the go than the come. Yeah, and I'm also saying that you can get breakfast pizza all day at Come and Go. Just lower your standards. You maybe don't want to. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. That is so sad. When I know, but I was like, that was that's so me. Oh. Yeah, as Dinette said in the chat, it wasn't meant to be, <laughs> but I ate it anyway. But the one that went in the trash is the one that I should have eaten, and the one that I ate is the one that should have gone into the trash. And that is a metaphor for my entire life. Oh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you had good breakfast pizza since? Did you rectify the situation? No, because I don't really have a good source okay. right now. Well, because yeah, Heggie's, it reminds me, I'm going to, you guys talk while you're sharing okay. your experiences. Right. You I have been emailing the people at Heggie's Pizza periodically, asking them when they're going to bring back their breakfast pizza. Okay, you keep demanding that, Karen. I'm going to go on with my next yeah. experience. Yeah. Okay. Sammy will... Sorry, Sammy at Heggie's. Um, I haven't bugged you since November 30th, but uh, you didn't have any updates then, but I'm going to email you again right now and ask. And I'm going to tell you my story. Okay. So uh, I was at the grocery store and I found something that looked kind of amazing this week. It was... Uh, Chocolate chip cookie dough peanut butter. Ah, okay. Weird. Yeah, naturally flavored peanut butter spread. So I was like, ooh, it's peanut butter, but it tastes like chocolate chip cookie dough. And I see it has chocolate chips in it. That sounds amazing. Let me buy that. So I bought it. And it's natural peanut butter. And I've had natural peanut butter before. So it didn't surprise me when I opened it up and the oils were on top and you have to stir it. You didn't do what my dad would do and just pour that off to torture somebody else? You know, I thought you had a story about doing that more as a prank. I didn't know. Yeah, my dad <laughs> did that as a prank to his, his brothers. <laughs> I'm back to my um, email. But yeah, you know, the peanut butter was so chalky, it wouldn't even stir in. And it was so messy because all the oil was on top. And as you're trying to like just stir that in, all the oil is just like splashing over and making the whole jar oily and nasty. 
and it just it wasn't good the chocolate chips like they weren't just tiny little things they were normal size so they weren't blending in at all the flavor tasted a lot like honey it i don't see where they got the cookie dough part except for the texture was so rough it tasted like stale old raw cookie dough brian maybe you should just get your favorite peanut butter and mix in chocolate chips and call it a day yeah, you know, it made me think I should just be eating sugar salad right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I had to try this. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, and I'm not saying anything about PB Crave, you know, that's the brand. Maybe they make other good ones, but this one was not a win. And I was so disappointed because I was excited about that. So that's my sad, sad experience. That is sad. Mm -hmm. my, it's very sad for you because you love peanut butter. I love peanut butter. I love cookie dough. I love chocolate chips. Right. But I just I just got like chunky bit of honey candy and melted. And and you do not love the bit of honey. No, no. Well, when I was at the grocery store, I found these from Snyder's of Hanover twisted pretzel sticks, which they have other flavors of season. And when I read the seasonings, it made me think of our local brand here, Dots, uh, onion, garlic, and pepper. And no, I national. To, I've seen that everywhere. I was amazed. Yeah, every every truck stop had them now. And I love Snyder's pretzels in general, especially their sourdough pretzels, whether it's the big ones, the nibblers, the flavored ones. But I also like their tiny twists and honey braided stuff. So I'm like, well, even if it doesn't taste like dots, I'll probably like it. Opened it up, smelled it, smelled just like dots. A bite. These are so disappointing. Oh no. They, they're soft. The powdered seasoning on them is like super soft almost like fine powdered sugar and there's a little bit of crunch I mean when I say they're soft it's not like a soft pretzel but it's not like that pretzel crunch so I was double disappointed because I normally love Snyder's and I love these seasonings and it's just you know how I know you were super excited about these you didn't even say like we should do these on the podcast you're like I'm not waiting I'm just going to town on these suckers <laughs> And like is, I've been sitting staring at these Boston cream honey buns. I told them I we need to do this this week because I have to have these. And I've been waiting. And now I'm I just ate one live for this podcast and I'm I'm all disappointed again. You, you know, know if I change my expectations on what they are, I might have to dip them in cheese or something, but no. It is a sad thing when our best experience comes from Sonic of the week. Or Taco Bell. <laughs> I um Brian, yes. The Dennis. fact that you called eating six corn dogs a good experience scares me. Comparatively, it's better than stale old breakfast pizza and nasty chunky peanut butter. Let's eat some Valentine's food since we're yes, talking about well, it. Like the, the rest should be good. Like the things we're reviewing should be really good. <laughs> Raspberry cream Kit Kats which some of my friends have already been eating, not from me. They just went out and bought their own. What? <laughs> yeah. They didn't wait for us to review them? What? <laughs> Did it. <laughs> they are friends. All right, but yes, this is, I believe this is new for this year, the raspberry cream for Valentine's Day. So actually now, want them. Yeah. Now you can, one of the most common Japanese Kit Kats that you find in the U.S. is the raspberry. So, but this is Hershey, right? Rather than Nestle, like the Japanese ones. Oh, well, there's not much chocolate on the bottom. You can see the wafer cookie. These are these have a very strong aroma, though. They smell a lot like the fake strawberry candy, like yeah. strawberry quick is our reference. But yeah. these aren't bad. No. Yeah, I like them. So you know the little candies that have the wrapper that looks like a strawberry and they have a the little gel the little goo in them my favorites that's what these i love those. remind me of kind of even though those are strawberry Wait. and these are raspberry but you could fool me and say that they're strawberry yeah you could say these are these are fruit flavored and mm -hmm. i just saw something recently that was labeled fruit flavored and i was like that's sad <laughs> because there is nothing that is just like fruit but um what got me about these is, you know, the Japanese Kit Kats just downsized a little bit. They made them smaller. Mm -hmm. But we've had enough of them, even if they're different sizes, where this feels materially bigger and thicker 
and kind of harder to bite than the Japanese ones. They're less creamy. They are. And compared to a regular Kit Kat in the U.S., they are much smaller. Yeah. Yes. But they do come in these full bags, so you can eat a lot of them. Yeah, so I mean, quantity-wise. You don't have to share just because they're individually wrapped. Oh, no, not at all. They're smaller wrappers, but you can still come out eating more. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. Another candy that we think is new, at least we haven't seen it other years, is the white cream Reese's Heart. Now, there have been white chocolate Reese's. There have been heart uh, Reese's, but the white chocolate, which I think is the same as the white cream, I think is new. And usually and Brian knows Reese's, so if he hasn't seen them before, they probably are new. Well, and also, so Brian Reese's. will do anything. I finally just had my last direct from the factory peanut butter cup yesterday. Oh, those mm. are so good. Those are so good. But yeah, white chocolate and Reese's is one of the few places where I can say, this is all right. So let's see how these are. I think the white chocolate peanut butter cup is a little better than these. The ratio of peanut butter to white mm -hmm. chocolate's different. Yep. yep. I would agree with that. Just like the but regular. I'll still eat all of them. The regular chocolate hearts, mm -hmm. there is too much chocolate compared to the peanut butter. Same thing here. Stick with the white chocolate Reese's cups. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. The thing about the white chocolate is that Reese's is that the white chocolate fades away and you just taste the peanut butter. But this does not have enough peanut butter where you still only taste the peanut butter, but you're like, is this the stuff Brian talked about earlier where you're just chewing and chewing but not getting a lot of peanut butter? For those on the live stream, look at all of that chocolate at the edges here. When I bit into it, you can see there's a lot of white chocolate. Mm -hmm. Amy, you're showing them that is getting in between me and these honey ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no okay honey buns is a snack cake that i never have really uh been excited about in all honesty and oh, yeah when i yeah we talked about this preparing for this episode mm -hmm. yeah and, and brian knowing, was like no knowing that we were doing them i am seeing the regular glazed honey bun all over by different brands like it never dawned on me like i'm yeah. seeing this all over the place but it's not the same company putting them out so everyone and this I remember always rejecting them, but then once I had one, I liked it better than I thought I would. But I recently had some other brand of honey buns, and Lord, if I remember which one, I honestly don't. Um, it, Everybody I makes did them. not like them at all. Yeah. Like, it was it, wet. It, the glaze was just wet. It was just ick. Yeah. In my just journeys, I like Tasty Cake has them, Hostess has them, Little Debbie has them, Every Benjamin's gas has them. Has their own brand of them. Yeah, fresh Mrs. Freshly has them. Mm -hmm. There's just like the vending machines that are too cheap to even carry Mrs. Freshly's. They have like a a sub brand of them. Yeah, like every gas station has their own brand. They're everywhere. Yep. And I think that there's only six of them actually in existence because nobody buys them. Yes. Now this is. I don't know if we're calling this a snack cake, but this might not be bite sized because a, t a honey bun at least by Tasty Cake, is kind of large in church. And they're all about the so, size. So we have three kinds, right? We have, yes, we do. We have the glazed honey bun. Which is regular, what yeah. I think of the, as the classic honey bun, the glazed. Yeah. We have the iced honey bun, which most honey bun manufacturers also make. And then from Tasty Cake, we have the Boston cream honey bun. The um, iced honey bun looks like a sugar bomb of glaze. They all look like sugar bombs of glaze. Well, I mean, yeah. And I mean, Heather, sugary, sugary frosting. That's what this looks like. We'll find out. Yeah. And Heather says you should mm -hmm. microwave them for a few seconds before we eat them. Why I don't have one of my students. glaze would melt off. Well, that's so a few yeah, but, seconds, not a few minutes. <laughs> and, all, and also, all pastries are much better warm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Okay. That's, so let me, let me just like five these. seconds or so, guys. But I'm not going to do that. Are we starting on the glaze? Yeah, let's yeah, start let's, with the glaze. And I, I can honestly say, I don't yeah. think I've ever had a Tasty Cake honey bun. So this is a first for me. Me neither. Me neither. And I love me some Tasty Cakes. All right. You know, that's a solid, solid little pastry here. Nothing mind-blowing, but it's fresh. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, a nice it's little, you know... Glazed donut, reminiscent of that. Mm -hmm. Much better than the last one I had, which was not a tasty cake. But. Yeah, um, I 
I feel like that's very much like a donut, but without having to waste your time with the hole in the middle, being like feeling ripped off. And you know, this, this is why I love it. It's like a glazed donut. You're exactly right. And I love glazed donuts. It, it's individually wrapped. And I'm wondering if, now I know in Little Debbie or anywhere else you can buy them in a box, they are still individually wrapped. But I'm wondering if mm -hmm. this is a little different to keep it fresher or if we just got lucky with the freshness factor. Well, but actually, if you look, yeah, the expiration date's pretty soon. Oh. Um, and I do have, yeah. I did, I do have some more of the Boston creams that expire a few weeks later. So these are towards the end of their lives. I mean, they've got a couple of weeks left right. before they become, you know, we don't know how long ago they were put out. Trash. Yeah. I mean, we all know, and we, we've said this before, a snack cake, night and day difference on if it's fresh or not. You know, it, go it could be ice. good or amazing. So Danny's already eating it. We're going for the ice. All right, yeah, I got the ice one here. Ooh, the bottom isn't ice. That kind of surprises me. Well, you need to have a safe place for your fingers when you're eating it. I don't know. Hmm. Wait, they're okay. watching us eat. And it's wait, not the watching... sugar explosion I expected. It just, I don't know. So it makes I mean, a it's difference. Sweet. Wait, it makes a difference if you eat it with the pastry. Down I think they just noticed our techniques are different. That I ate it okay. with the icing up, and you ate it with the icing down. I mean, it's not bad. I still like it. Yeah, I feel. I like don't know if if I. <laughs> If I bite it icing down, the icing's gonna go in the bottom of my mouth and I, my tongue has to flip it. <laughs> I don't, for some reason, I don't like the iced one as much. No, I don't either. It tastes a little dry. The icing is kind of gross. Yeah. And that, well, I don't but, know that it's gross, but it's not what I expected. Because I'll, I'd still eat it in general, but I won't. It and I do want to point like, something out. It's more like bread with frosting on it. Now, what's yep. interesting is the Boston cream pie is not in a clear package. No, you can't see it. So this has been a big mystery. I only have the picture to go by. And as I was looking, I also to noticed show you the cream filling, which you wouldn't be able to tell, I guess. Mine got kind of flattened, but I won't hold that against it. I'm excited for this one. And too, the bottom of it, the whole shape of it is different too, because if you look at the yeah. others, right, they are. They kind of like go around, like they're almost like wrapped. And this is more solid. I took a pretty big bite and didn't get cream yet. So let me keep going. Oh my God, it tastes good though, even without the cream. Mm. Man, this is good. I do like this, but I love me a Boston cream donut. Me too. But where is the cream? It's in there. There's just not a lot of it. Yeah, there isn't. These are it's good. Literally, like right in the center, just a little bit. You see that one little dollop? I don't even have three channels of it. Just. I would so much rather have a Boston cream donut, but in a pinch, these will do. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see mine actually early on here. It's hard to see the cream, but it's in there. Oh. You know what? The chat is telling us uh, they gave us an idea of maybe playing you know that game FMK, Frolic with Mary or Kill. We should do that. With oh, you. we should. I have a question before we do. Yeah. One thing I was looking at on these, on all of these, the package says that it's a dollar eighty nine. Would you pay a dollar eighty nine for one of these? Mm hmm. If no. I were at a gas station looking for breakfast and they didn't have nasty breakfast pizza that I was going to buy, even though I knew it was awful, I might. But if they had donuts that were like Actually, two yeah, for a you know, I was gonna say most gas stations have donuts. So uh, if it were the only option, yes, it's worth that. But I feel like I would buy other things instead. Yeah, I kind of think so too. I was like, I really enjoy these, um, but at a, I didn't even pay attention to how much they were. I just just like take my money. I need the snack cakes. <laughs> I mean, you can buy a whole box of Nutty Buddies for the same price. Now that's a breakfast. And you would eat a whole box of Nutty Buddies for breakfast. I could. You would. He may have in the past. <laughs> I don't think I have, but it won't surprise you me if I did. College days with the cosmic brownies. 
So yeah, the game, FMK. Oh, okay. Yep. Heather predicts this will be easy. And you know <laughs> what? It, it is. And you know what else is easy? This Boston cream uh, pie one, because I'm going to frolic with that. Well, you're going to frolic with it. Yeah, I am. You know, it's good, but it's not the best thing out there. You know, it has cousins that are much, you know, better. Uh, right. So, like, it, it would be a disappointing marriage because I'd keep, you know, and this is on me, but I keep, like, finding fault of, like, you know what? Why aren't you like a donut? I want you to be a donut. You know, yeah. I would have that regret and that, that's wrong on all ends. So like, that's a frolic right there. Not necessarily a one night stand, but nothing long-term. Okay. Like, uh, the thing that is going to be long-term is the uh, glazed honey bun. I'm going to marry yeah. that one. Because, the regular glazed, not the iced, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. The, yep. Glazed, not iced. Because while that is not a glazed donut, it's okay. It's it's making me think a glazed donut would be nice, but I'm not wanting for that. I'm happy with what I have here. It's uh, you know, it's it's jumping into a marriage that's already been in place for like 20 years. Like you know, there's not that mm -hmm. little, little spark at the beginning that's like, woo, yeah. But it's like, you know, you're in that routine from the get-go. And it's like nice. Nothing amazing, but it's, it's, you know, a solid little relationship in small town in the Midwest. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and I guess that means I'm going to kill the iced honey buns uh, because they're going to get iced. I mean, yeah. there's nothing special about it. It's, it's frosting on bread. I, I can't, I can't get down. Well, with it's that. not even good frosting. I mean, it's not even like the homemade powdered sugar milk glaze, you know, so <laughs> the frosting. Which, so if that's true, which one would you uh, do these things with, Amy? Well, oh, I'm killing that. I'm killing this, the iced honey bun for the same reasons. And I struggled a lot between Frolic and Mary with the Boston cream pie and the glaze. Because like I said, I do love a good glazed donut and that tastes like a glazed donut. But I also love Boston cream pie and the chocolate frosting on this one is better than I expected. <laughs> it's chocolatey. Whether it's real chocolate or not, I don't know, but it's chocolatey. And I liked a little bit of cream in there, but ultimately I think I, uh, I'm, go I'm going to agree with Brian here though. That's just gonna be a frolic because that might get old quick. And I love just like the pure, steady, always good glazed uh, honey bun slash donut. <laughs> it was a so, tough choice though. Ask me tomorrow and it might change my mind. <laughs> So interestingly, um, I'm also killing the iced. Just the, the icing, it did not add, it detracted. But also interestingly, we are not gonna be unanimous here. Mm. I am gonna marry the Boston cream. I, I love Boston cream. I really very much enjoyed it. I'm gonna make that one mine. You know, and I do see, I mean like the, the glazed honey bun, like it is solid and reliable, but as I'm thinking about it, I want that to be, you know, solid and reliable, like a good friend with benefits because we're never really going to go to the next level, but whenever I need it, I know it's going to be there. And so that's also why I chose it to be, it's, it's really, you know, it's like a donut. It's not like that uh, glazed honey bun. That is the perfect side piece. Like it's never gonna be your primary. Like the Boston cream, like that's gonna be there. I have I'm not gonna say that marriage is gonna last forever, but like I'm definitely gonna be infatuated with it for a while at a level higher than with the glazed honey bun. But that glazed honey bun, it's gonna stick around, but we're never really gonna get that high. So sorry, welcome to the friends with benefits zone. And I feel like that should end the podcast, but we have Oreos. I'm really excited <laughs> about Oreos. Oreos. They have gluten-free Oreos. I mean, I'm a little, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just a little bit disappointed that none of us made a tasty cake joke or a honey buns joke during the frolic, but oh, well. because <laughs> tasty okay, cakes Oreos. are secretly Oreos, overrated. So. Okay, Oreos, so guys, do we, we want to- two kinds of gluten-free. Yeah, should we just- Normal and double stuff. 
refresh our palettes here with the classic Oreo. Just remember yeah, let's do that. that. Like, you see, the regular and the gluten free do look exactly alike. Yes, they do. I noticed that earlier. <laughs> I was like, oh, these do need to be kept separately. They do smell the same too. So regular. That's an Oreo. I can't remember. You know, every time we have like a regular Oreo as a point of reference, it always strikes me as how long it's been since I've had just a regular Oreo. <laughs> and I usually don't just eat an Oreo as is. I'm either putting peanut butter on it or dunking it in milk or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the gluten-free. Let's see how that compares. <laughs> And like Amy said, everything, the texture, the height, the amount that, Well, no, there's one difference. Where is one difference? If you look, there's six small holes oh. on each cookie on the gluten-free. No, it there actually are. says it's And it says gluten-free. It says gluten-free. That's free where on. the gluten was. They punched it out of those holes. Yeah, <laughs> it says gluten-free on the cookie. Yeah. And there are six small holes, three on each side of the word Oreo. Interesting. Mm. So they are, they are visually distinct. Hmm. Wow. I mean, maybe I could detect a slight difference in the texture, but if you the just- The cookie is more off, crumbly. My cookie fell apart in my hands. Okay. You know, sometimes that happens. I, I, I just thought that might be the cookie itself, but that happened to me too. my regular one, but it is a little- it's a slightly different texture of the cookie, but not much. If, yep. if I didn't know any better, I would just think this is a regular Oreo. You could fool me. Now, they do not separate it as well. At least this one didn't. <laughs> it actually seems slightly more dry. Like too. But I think that the double stuff will get rid of the dryness. Yes, and I'm, for our YouTube, I'm just going to compare here. The double stuff has noticeable. I'm going to compare them differently. Brian is showing them visually. I'm just going to take a bite. My cookie is crumbly here on, on this one, too. Mm -hmm. But the taste, I can tell no real difference. No. The texture is slightly different. It's a little bit more crumbly. I wonder how it would hold up to milk. I think the cookie is just a slightly bit drier, which is why it's more crumbly. And and the dryness and the crumbly is why they didn't just take Oreos and make them gluten free. They decided to actually brand them differently, because if they could have made it just gluten free, I think they would have. I bet it's um, really good with the milk. Yeah, in the chat, uh, just Jane was saying that uh, she gets stomach aches from regular Oreos, but might be able to tolerate these. Um, I would say definitely. Uh, it also was a good reminder to me that the double stuff is a better version. And the even regular though we're, is we're, we're doing this comparison and telling you there's a difference. If you just put a plate of these out. I say plate because people could read the packaging um, and people were eating them. I yeah. don't think they'd know they were gluten free just by unless no, they I read the some of these. You know what I, mean. I did put some of these in the freezer, but they've been out of the freezer for a good half an hour. Yeah. Same here. My my freezer one's like the same temperature right now. So I've <laughs> lost my ability to to tell if they're better frozen. No, I got but Brian is dipping. Yeah. And uh, I went and got this and ran back. And um, just a pro tip, don't run while holding a full glass of milk. That's life yeah, lesson. Uh, I don't know if it's going to show up on the, no, it's not. Never mind. Um, the cream actually looks a little different. It's whiter on the gluten-free one. Wait a second, Amy. The listeners can't tell this, but the video people can. When Brian dips his Oreo, he puts his whole yeah. freaking finger in the milk. Oh, Danny, this is not a new revelation for you. You've you've seen this before. You've, you've I've maybe not paid attention. You repressed that memory. You got to get the whole cookie in. To you, is that the gluten free or the regular? That was gluten free. It is a little soggier, but that's not a problem. 
did yeah did those six little Guys, holes give it kind of like different in between yeah did the six little holes give it kind of like a white castle effect and help it just pull in that moisture yeah you know i'm actually i'm i'm gonna not dunk as long because you know, i have the technique down <clears throat> well he's doing <laughs> that honestly compare the creams not only are they different colors they taste they're they're different textures hmm the hmm. gluten-free one is creamier <laughs> the regular one's grittier But um, dunking them is different. They are softer and soggier when you dunk them. So maybe some people wouldn't like that as much. It's still, it's fine. The taste is, is Oreo, no question there. But let me go back to a classic and dunk that. Yeah, my gluten freeze are definitely falling apart in my hands. And the creams are slightly different, but. Hmm. Which is the evil twin? Oh. I don't think either are evil. They're both good. No, one has to be the evil twin. One does have to be the evil twin. This isn't the Minnesota version of which one is the evil twin. This is the nope. worldwide. And, and I'm going to draw on Heather Chessman in the chat. Heather has this nailed. You have to drown the Oreo until the bubbles show. And those little yeah. holes in the gluten-free, that's going to make those bubbles show. And the best way and to so get the bubbles is to fully submerge. Like if you're going to drown right. someone, you're not just going to slightly, you know, gently dunk their face in water. You're going to down that whole thing. Maybe your whole and, fist is going in there. And just and stick it's a the fork in the middle so you don't have to stick your fingers in the glass and then you'd have a dunker. <laughs> okay. Mm. This is I say gluten-free is, gluten is evil. I'm sorry. It's like, because I can tolerate gluten, that one's evil. <laughs> if if it gave me stomach pains, the other one would be. But that's basically where I was going to go to. I was going to say, since I um, can tolerate gluten, I'm going to call the gluten free not as good. So almost like mediocre. No, not really. I'm trying to think of it. Brian's going to be nice and evil. inclusive. It's I know. Evil. I think it's I am because I'm just so happy that they are here for gluten free yeah. people to be enjoy. able to enjoy. I knew it. I knew Brian I would choose the one everyone. But you know what? Here's the thing about that, Brian. And here's where you're a hypocrite. You want everyone to enjoy the Oreos, mm -hmm. but you're not sharing your Oreos. Well, okay. Am I your your mom? No. By your I'm own. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You want everyone to be able to enjoy them, but you wouldn't let that happen. Am I a sugar daddy here? I don't. I didn't get that memo. Right. And so why do you need an Oreo that everyone can enjoy if no one else can have yours anyway? Well, no, I'm just saying that I am happy for others. It's not about me, Daniel. Life is not about well, there's me. A, there's a first. <laughs> um, but the thing is, if they switched the recipes and said, this is what it is now, I wouldn't be mad at them. I you agree. Know? I think if they had made it a little bit less crumbly, they would have done that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like they probably did what they could, and it's fine. So, you know, both are good. Don't get me wrong. But if, if we're going to say thinking of others, I'm going to say the gluten-free is the good twin, but I'm outranked here. So officially, we'll say that the gluten-free is the yep. evil twin. <laughs> and I'm going to say, Oreo people, I appreciate that you tried to get Oreos to be gluten-free, and I appreciate that you got close enough where you're like, ah, we can sell these. You know what's impressive? Possible. They had confidence because they not only released them, they released them with double stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the store I went to, that, you know, they were not just in, um, I saw them in the store, not just on the shelves with the regular Oreos, although they were, but they had the like cardboard, hey, look at me, gluten-free Oreos display too. They're putting some oomph behind this. They're not just sneaking them into the market. Yeah, so if you can't do gluten or if you just want to reduce your gluten um you know what and i'm, I'm sorry if the store is sold out of regular oreos right yeah get these and you won't regret it i forgot that you know it's much more satisfying to say it like with an unnecessary umlaut so say gluten you know gluten free but if you want the gluten you know then stick with the regular oreos that accent is a scam the gluten i am <laughs> Well, and now the gluten-free people that need to be gluten-free can have cookies and cream, ice cream and stuff. 
Mm -hmm. Because why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know the gluten-free people are loving me. So I'm happy for them too, for that. Yeah. And they could I'm have some other crazy fillings now too. I was wondering if they're going to, you know, continue the trend and do some more classic. Well, ones. if the wasabi, if the gluten... right? No. <laughs> I was thinking mint maybe. <laughs> well, on that note. Yes, yeah, so on that note. Thanks for listening, everybody. Everyone. Yes, and have uh, a good bye. week. Have a good week. Bye bye. <laughs> YouTube, thank you for being here with us this week. <laughs> Yes, thank you for sticking around. All of our listeners are going to be like, why do they keep saying scam all the time? <laughs> it's the word and of the day. Some of our YouTube folks too, so don't worry about it. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. <laughs> You're missing it's, out it's on a, nothing. It's just, 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 just a scam Brian maybe was involved in. The scam. <laughs> you know what's not a scam? All these leftovers I have sitting around here with the honey bun. You got a big buffet behind you? I, yes. Are we going to find out? If a honey bun is bite size, which one do I have the most of left? Yeah, Brian, I appreciate that, that. That Brian, your instinct is not which one is going to be the easiest. You're like, which one is which one do I have the most of? If you're going to play the game, play the game. And I need to save uh, mine for pictures, so uh, I'm not going to play. I the feel game. like, oh man, I feel like if you die of this, I'm going to have blood on my hands. Brian, I, listen, I don't think this is a good idea. I only asked it. Because I was curious, oh, not so because I was encouraging. You're saying I shouldn't do it. You're saying I shouldn't try it. You shouldn't do it. And if you die because you did it, my conscience can be clear because I very clearly said, <laughs> do not see if this is bite sized. Okay. But he really wants you to do it. He's I just don't want him to do it. I, you know what? If he, Amy says that Danny wants me to do it, I should do it. He, yeah, he missed me. Do I, I, I want to see him again. It is like oh. the size of his face, Heather. <laughs> it's huge. It, you know, I'm just going to say right now, it's not bite size, but let's see how far I can get. Hang on one second. I'm going to dial Famous nine and one. Words. Yes. And then hold on. Wait. Well, you know what? You yeah. can actually do nine, one, and one, and then not hit the send button. because. Oh, I see. Brian's right. been down oh. this road before. <laughs> okay. I'm actually just going to email. I did email Heggy, so we'll see if we hear back. <laughs> Looks like the, it's a look at him go. Look at him go. Look at him go. Oh, God. No, Brian. Please don't do this. It's not bite size. It's not. It's I could put the whole thing in my mouth, but then I couldn't chew. And I might get lock jaw. <laughs> so. You might guess lock jaw is the thing that we're worried about, mm -hmm. Ryan. <sighs> oh no, someone got donut pieces all over my lap. <laughs> I think that's the show for the week, folks. Someone got donut pieces all over your lap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think the that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Yeah, we'll we be really back do. next week Thank unless you. Brian has to get a yeah. insulin pump installed. Subscribe, ring that dinner bell, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.